Hello, it's Christian, the CDF noob again. It took me quite some time, but I was finally able to get started with the Behemoth challenges from over the wire. So let's have a look at the first one. As always, we start by connecting to the challenge server via SSH. Now let's have a look at the provided challenge files. For the Narnia challenges, on which I already did a full playlist, and which I'll link in the video description, we had the source code from which the executables were compiled. This now changes with the Behemoth challenges. We only have the executables, so we have to adapt and analyze the disassembly. Let's start by executing behemoth 0. The program asks us for a password, so I'll input some random characters to see what happens afterwards. Access denied. Well, I didn't expect anything else. Of course, we still don't know exactly what the program does, so yet let's use ltrace to see how the executable does library calls and understand what exactly the program is doing. Ltrace is a program that simply runs the specified command until it exits. It intercepts and records the dynamic library calls, which are called by the executed process, and the signals which are received by that process. It can also intercept and print the system calls executed by the program. Now that we know what Ltrace does, let's use it on Behemoth 0. We can see that the program starts with libc start main then calls printf to print the string password to the console. Afterwards, scanf waits for the user input. I again enter some random characters. The program then calls string len on the string ok caret gsy bex caret y and then compares that input to eat my shorts. This must be the password check and password must be eat my shorts. The final puts simply prints the access denied message to the console. Now that we expect the required password to be eat my shorts, let's try it out. I start behemoth 0 and enter eat my shorts as the password. And there we have a shell, so the password was correct. Entering who am I, we can see that we are behemoth 1. So let's get a password for behemoth 1. Okay, that was rather easy, but is there another way to find the correct password? Usually for these kinds of challenges, it makes sense to first run strings on the executable. According to the man page, string does the following. For each given file, GNU strings prints the printable character sequences that are at least four characters long, or the number given with the options below, and are followed by an unprintable character. By default, it only prints the strings from the initialized and loaded sections of object files. For other types of files, it prints the strings from the whole file. Strings is mainly useful for determining the contents of non-text files. So let's execute strings against behemoth 0. There we can see a couple of strings that could have been the password. We have Unix is better than Windows, follow the white rabbit, and Pac-Man is high on crack, which I hope he's not, but we know that these are not the correct password. So where is the correct password hidden? To figure this out, the best way is to have a look directly at the disassembly of the executable. As with all Narnia challenges, we open behemoth 0 in GDB. Then I set the disassembly flavor to Intel due to personal preference. Finally, we disassemble the main function by executing disassemble main. At main plus 54, we can see the call to printf, which is used to display the password message. Then at main plus 71, the call to scanf, which reads the user input. The call to stringlen, which we saw in the output of ltrace, is at main plus 83. Then at main plus 96, memfrop is called. But what is memfrop? The memfrop function encrypts the first n bytes of the memory area s by exclusive oring each character with the number 42. The effect can be reversed by using memfrop on the encrypted memory area. Note that this function is not a proper encryption routine, as the X or constant is fixed and is only suitable for hiding strings. Good to know. So memfrop takes some kind of input and XORs each character with 42. The memfrop function takes two parameters, a pointer to the memory which should be XORed with 42 and the number of bytes that should be affected. According to the x86 calling conventions, the parameters are pushed to the stack in reversed order. So the value that is pushed to the stack at main plus 91 is the number of bytes that should be memfropped, which is also the return value of the call to string len, which happens at main plus 83. 
then the value that is pushed to the stack at main plus 95 must be the string that will be memfropped. After the call to memfrop comes the call to string compare, which will compare the input against the now decrypted password. The two parameters are pushed to the stack right before the call to string compare. Now the only remaining part is to find out where the encrypted password is stored in the executable. The string that should be memfropped is pushed to the stack as a parameter, a parameter at main plus 95. Before that, at main plus 92, the effective address of ebp plus ox1c is loaded into eax. So the encrypted string must be at ebp minus ox1c. And at main plus 7, we can see that a size directive is used to store the 32-bit representation of the given value into the four bytes that start at ebp minus ox1c. Now if we take a good look at uh, ox475e4b4f, we can see that each byte is in the ASCII range, and the value is g caret ko, which is the reverse of our expected string. So here the memfrop password is stored in the executable. Solving this challenge was easy, but as always, there was more to learn than simply finding the flag. I hope you found this exercise as interesting as I did. If so, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel to see more CTF related videos. If you have any questions or want me to have a look at other challenges that could help me learn more on hacking in general, please feel free to leave a comment under the video. Until next time, bye.